Welcome to the Roots Revival podcast. Roots Revival is a midweek worship service from Centenary United Methodist Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, grounded in Americana, roots-based music, contemplation, and community. We invite you to participate with us in celebration of song and word. So welcome. My name is Glenn Kink, and I'm the senior minister at Centenary. It's so good to see you all tonight at Roots. I'm so thankful that you are here, that you've come out on this cooler evening uh, as we continue our Advent journey. A little bit of a personnel change tonight. Um, I'm not in the bulletin because I wasn't supposed to be here. But Brett, um, sadly, he has caught the COVID. He is <gasps> fine. Oh, He's no. fine. He says, I just feel like I've got the world's worst cold, which I am thankful that's all it has become. Uh, but he was died or tested or whatever on Tuesday, and so he has um, decided to sequester himself from us, so we thanked him for not sharing. Uh, and so with that, you get me. So if I don't quite do it the ways that Susanna does it or Meg does it or Brett does it, just smile and go, ah, it's Glenn. <laughs> and just go with that. And we'll just go with it. So. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, normally there's a QR code and Stacy told me that she had taken it out, but we're just glad to see you here and to be in worship together. So let us prepare our hearts by singing together. Let's stand and sing. Not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> it was a good track. Look, I take direction well. There's nothing here that says not yet. So we'll tell you, stay tuned. You'll get to sing soon. <laughs> Uh, taking the place of Pat Lawrence, I would like to introduce Court Winter joining us today. <laughs> Welcome, Court. And Pat will, has promised to be back with us next week. So.
may be seated. So let us join together in our call to worship, which we find printed in the bulletin. Tonight we refocus our lives with your love. You are love itself. Fill us to overflowing, we pray. Tonight we center our heart within your mercy. You who are mercy itself wraps us up so mercy becomes our nature. Tonight we come as those who seek your way, your truth, and the life you offer. Let us feel your presence move within us. Help us to know your spirit, you and your husband are one. Help us live tonight, tomorrow, and every day as the gift of your love, love, and mercy. So tonight we gather again in our Advent journey and we light the candles. We hear these words which come from the prophet Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So last week, we lit the first candle, the candle of hope. Tonight, we light this candle, symbol of peace. And as we light it, we're reminded that all of what Christ comes with is this episode of peace. In a world that was warring, a world that was in turmoil, the Christ child brings peace. So as we think about this, may the Holy Spirit make our hearts ready to receive that gift of peace this year. Let us pray. Almighty God, bestow your light upon us that we begin to rid the darkness of our hearts that we may attain the true light and find peace through Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare Next week, we'll try three parts. <laughs> Maybe we should pray about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So we come to this time of the service where we do come to the Lord in prayer. And so I know that tonight you came with folks on your heart that you want to lift up. And so I invite you at this time to just name the prayer requests that are on your hearts. Exactly, and Mary Jack. <laughs> right. Pat and his mom. Yeah. Pat and his mom. Steve and Judy's son, Adam. My sister, Willow. My mother and Uncle Richard. Okay. So let us pray. Remember those days. We remember in history when the world seemed dark and the road rocky, full of pits and potholes, hills and valleys. And then burst forth the rose. The way was made smooth and peace was restored. And while we hold on to that image in that story, we think about our lives, those whom we have named out loud and those whom we have named in our hearts, the heaviness of those burdens. And we find ourselves again, this time personally, standing on a rough road with potholes and speed bumps, with loose gravel and slimy mud. And so we ask, we beg, we pray, we yearn to hear your voice to know your presence, to know your promise, to know that peace. Speak to us. Speak to us so that we know that even, even in the rockiness and the rough patches of life, that we are not alone that you are the one who loves us most and are standing with us in the midst of whatever it is that we face today or tomorrow or the days to come. <laughs> Oh, 
So hear, O Lord, the unburdening of our souls as we leave at your altar these burdens. As reconciled people, let us turn and greet each other with signs of peace, reconciliation, and love.
scripture lesson this evening uh, picks up from where we also uh, read scripture for the lighting of our Advent wreath. It comes from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 2, and then verses 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. A child is born to us. A son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness, now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together to worship you, to be in fellowship and community, to be reminded of your abiding presence in our lives. Lord, I ask especially as we come to the time of this message that the words of my mouth and the meditation and thoughts of all of our hearts will be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Glenn and I were just talking a a moment ago. It's this time of year where once the sun sets, it gets so dark, so dark at night. And I wonder, has there ever been an experience in your life where you've had to navigate the path in the dark? Maybe you're trying to get from point A to point B across a room, or maybe you're outside and you're like I am and have not replaced the light bulb in your porch light, and so you're navigating the dark uh, when there's no light around. But we have that feeling, if you've ever had that experience where you've had to kind of go along a path or get from one place to another without any sort of light, there can be times where that darkness just feels so overwhelming. You can't see anything. It's just so penetrating. And it it impairs our ability to navigate, to know where to go. It can almost feel paralyzing. We wonder if there are obstacles out there. We wonder where they are, what they may be. And I don't know if you're, you're like I am, but when I find myself in those situations, I, I kind of take very, very small steps with a great deal of trepidation, wondering what's going to happen next, what I'm going to encounter. We long for something, something to grasp, something to cling to. We long for help. We long for assistance. We long to just get to the next point, to the end of where our destination is, and to get there quickly and safely. I think about those experiences in my life, and and perhaps not just those are are moments that we have literally trying to navigate one place to another, but perhaps there are seasons in our lives where we feel as if we're journeying in the darkness, that we are people who are walking in the darkness. And perhaps we're experiencing such a season today, right now, in the midst of the season of Advent. I know we had kind of talked about this over Thanksgiving. I I think for for many of us, we were really looking forward to seeing 2020 in the rearview mirror and just looking forward to begin in 2021. But but perhaps the reality is that 2021 has been just as challenging. It's been full of grief, anxiety, disappointments, frustrations, challenges to our emotional, our physical, our financial, our relational well-being. We've experienced perhaps broken relationships or anxiety or uncertainty about the future. And if we think about where we are in the season of our lives, we may feel as if we are journeying right now with a great deal of trepidation. We're hesitant and uncertain about what the next step might hold. And yet we're so longing for a new day. We're so longing for a new era. If perhaps that is where you are today, in the season of Advent, perhaps we are looking around and and we see the way that 
our culture and our world tends to celebrate this season. And it is um, often can be a very loud way of observing the season with, with all of the sights and the smells and all the different things going on and, and just a lot of festivity and cheer. And, and perhaps if we are feeling as if we're walking in darkness, that experience feels so out of touch with what we're experiencing and, and so incongruent with our lived reality. But as we come together this evening, on the second week of Advent, perhaps it's, 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 it's assuring to remind ourselves that at the heart of the Advent season, at the heart of the Christmas season, is a message that speaks precisely to we who may feel as if we're walking in darkness. Because celebrating the birth of Christ is a joyful event. And yes, it is something that's worth celebrating and, and worth having festivity. But it's also important to remember why Jesus came in the first place to begin with. The reason why Christ came into this world, the reason why Christ is coming, why we observe this season is that God cares about us. God cares about our suffering. God cares about our grief. God cares about our pain. God sees us. God hears us. God loves us. And God loves us so much that God sent Christ to come to be with us as we are especially in those moments where we feel as if we're walking in darkness. One of the words that we use, the names that we give to Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus came to journey with us in all things. He meets us where we are and he comes to be with us and offer us comfort in the midst of pain, relief, as we feel as if we're carrying some heavy burdens, peace, as the storms of life rage, mercy and forgiveness for our sins, hope and wisdom in the midst of uncertainty and despair. He comes to offer us himself. And we have that promise in the season of Advent and throughout the year that nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from his love. No darkness can overcome his light. So as we think about journeying through this season of Advent, we talk about the idea that, that Christ is going to come again. We know that there will be a time, we don't know exactly when, but we know that Christ will come again and his kingdom will be in full realization. There will be a time where all of creation will be redeemed and made new. There will be a time where every tear that we have will be wiped away. There will be a time that we will get to experience unspeakable joy, unspeakable peace. And part of the season of Advent is preparing for that and looking forward to that time. But in the meantime, today, as we wait, as we journey in this moment, we are not alone. God is with us. The season of Advent is a time that we are invited to cry out, to cry out as we feel as if we are journeying in darkness. It is a time that we can offer to God all that is on our hearts, our pain, our angst, our longing. And it's also a time that as we feel as if we're walking in darkness, as we lift up the pain and the hurt and the burdens, we can be assured that God does see us. God hears us. God loves us and is present with us. That is at the heart of this Advent season. May we be reminded that Christ has come to shine light in the darkness, a light that can never ever be overcome. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand and sing? Mm -hmm.
assurance as we go this evening. May we go with the assurance that the light is shining in the darkness and no darkness can overcome it. Go in peace. Amen. Read.